Oh, what's good, YouTube? It's Gabriel with another Fan TV. If I got you another video, let the content of this video go ahead and smash that like button. Let the content of this channel go ahead and hit subscribe, man. Ravens content daily. The season is here. So we're going to keep pushing this content, keep it going, keep it rolling. So today I want to do your classic stock up, stock down report. Uh, following that first game of the preseason versus Tennessee Titans, I got four players stock going up, four players stock going down. And uh, so let, let's get right into it. Let's talk about it, okay? Um, the Ravens played a good game, but as we know, there's positives and negatives to every game. So first, I'm going to start off with uh, a player whose stock is going up, right? And that's Daniel Falele. Daniel Falele played 63 uh, snaps in that game, played well, didn't look tired out there. And that was the main thing I was worried about. Besides the fact that he's just a raw um, football player, I was worried about his physical conditioning not being well enough to actually play the game. You know, he would have to take breathers, have to take a blow. Might, he might get tired on a block and somebody might blow by him. But no, he was solid the entire game. And for somebody at 6'8", 385, to, be, to have good conditioning like that, very impressive. Now, when I a while back, I did a rookie video about expectations for the season. And I said, I didn't expect much from Daniel Falele. Now, not to say that after one game, oh, I expect him to be a starter and nothing like that. But if the Ravens do need him in a pinch, I feel more confident in him playing after what I saw in that preseason game. I really do. Because I was worried that if he had to play, it might not go out so well. But I know it's just backups and things like that. But he held his own. And I was impressed overall with what Daniel Falele did. I really was. So uh, good first game for him. His stock is definitely pointing in the, rock di in, in the right direction. So shout out to Daniel Falele. All right. Um. So the next player... Who's, whose stock is going up, we're going to say Travis Jones, man. Travis Jones has been impressive all camp, from rookie OTAs to, to, to mini camp, to mandatory mini camp, to training camp, to now that first game versus the Titans. He, absolute, he absolutely was wrecking the game plan up the middle, uh, stopping the run, and also adding that pass rush element. Chasing down a quarterback like Malik Willis, it's no easy feat, and he did it pretty easily you know what i mean now obviously it was a ball that malik willis probably should have thrown away out of bounds but travis jones didn't give up on the play and he brought him down to the ground like i said no easy no easy task right there so travis jones it, he, in that first game he showed me exactly what i wanted to see he's going to accomplish stopping the run and he's going to also provide pass rush versatility up the middle which the ravens needed desperately for many many years um, he's very different from the old 98 that we had, Brandon Williams. Love Brandon Williams, but you know, he was just a run stuffer. And that was and that was primarily what he did. But now with Travis Jones, I feel like we have a guy in there where if he's in a game, you can't just say he's in the game to stop the run. He could do he could do both. Um Michael Pierce was listed as the starting nose tackle on the Ravens first depth chart. But Travis Jones keeps practicing well, he's playing well. That's eventually going to be Travis Jones' spot, all right? Um, could be happening very early on in the season as well. So Travis Jones, impressive. His stock is definitely going up, heading in the right direction, okay? Now, a guy that I want to talk about, uh, veteran presence, somebody that when the Ravens first signed him, I wasn't too happy. Not not happy. I'm not going to say that. I wasn't too excited about, you know, and no ill will to the guy or anything like that. Um, Steven Means. Outside linebacker, bounce around the leagues. He's been on the Eagles. He's been on the Falcons. I think he's played for the Bucs. He might have been drafted by the Bucs. So, Steven Means is a guy where I mentioned him because for two reasons. He had a legitimately good game. He got a sack. He caused pressure. And he's been doing... He, I've been hearing his name a little bit throughout camp. Now, the second reason I'm mentioning him is the Ravens' outside linebacker depth is shot. Okay? Uh, as we go through this all the time, Owe, Hayes, uh, Justin Houston. As far as healthy outside linebackers that we expect to play a lot, that's it. So Steven Means being a fourth guy is very important. So him having a sack in the game, loved it. Now I just need him to see that, see him do that again. And maybe when, he, when the Ravens play the Cardinals, there's maybe some more quality opposition going out there that he's going against. Um, because the Ravens are going to need him. If they, especially if they don't sign anybody. I can't see why the Ravens wouldn't sign anybody. But if they don't, a guy like Steven Means is going to be very, very important because I don't want to see Ty Bowser 
rushing his rehab to get back week one because the Ravens are thin outside linebacker. Okay. With Ty's, with a guy like Ty's Bowser turning his Achilles, literally the last game of the season, I would rather just see him come back on, off the pup list, come back between that three to six week range, and, you know, start clean right there. Ojabo almost probably, most definitely is going to start on the pup list. I mean, he, you know, he just tore his Achilles. So um, then with Vince Beagle coming out, another Achilles injury. Um, the Ravens need an outside linebacker to step up, and Steven Means did that. Now, he didn't have really great sack numbers throughout his career. Now, he's always been a part-time player, except for in Atlanta, and he didn't really get much sacks there when he was in a more of a starter role. But if he could be a complimentary player on the Ravens and help out when needed, all good, all positive for Stephen Means right there, okay? Now, the last guy I want to talk about on the stock up, stop, uh, stock down report, right? So a player whose stock is going up to me is Anthony Brown, right? Now, when I say stock going up, I just mean that he played well and that he's trending in the right direction because I've seen him struggle in practice, staying in practice, hearing the reports, throwing interceptions. But when he got out there to the game, he played pretty well. He was he was pretty rock solid in the game. Um, I think his stats were oh, – I got him pulled up for you. One second. Um, but the main thing I liked about Anthony Brown was the fact that he was able to push the ball down the field. All right. If I had one complaint about Tyler Huntley, it's the fact that he's a safe quarterback. For better or for worse, he's safe, right? He's not going to put your team in bad situations by forcing the ball down the field, but he's also not going to give your offense that explosive element by pushing the ball down the field. You know what I mean? So it's like the quality that makes Tyler Huntley good also can hold Tyler Huntley back. Um, okay, cool. I got I got to pull it up. Anthony Brown was 10 for 15, 117 yards. Um, no touchdowns, but 11.7 yards uh, per completion. Anthony, uh, sorry, Tyler Huntley, for example, 16 for 18, great numbers, 109 yards, one touchdown, 6.8 yards per completion. And that's kind of what Tyler Huntley does. He's a he's he's a check down master. When last year when Lamar Jackson got hurt and everybody was saying, "Wow, Tyler Huntley, he has the short game working. He has the offense on time, on target." Well, that's because that's what he does. He works the short game. When it comes to making deep throws, that's not his strength. It's, it's really not. And, when you, and looking at his arm motion sometimes, it's like he doesn't have the power to get it down there, you know. Um, but I like Tyler Huntley as a player, so I'm not going to go too far. He could start on some NFL teams and probably be a decent starter. Uh, but sometimes he's just too safe. Now, now, back to Anthony Brown. Rookie, Oregon, like I said, he had some struggles in camp, had some struggles. I saw him in the training camp uh, in the open stadium practice, but he rebounded and played really well in the game, and that's when it matters. When the lights come on, he played well. Uh, beautiful touch throw to Riley Webb, uh, giving Shamar Bridges a shot down the field. Now, you can say it was a 50-50 ball, but it's actually a well-placed a well uh, placed football. He kind of threw it down the field, kind of back shoulders for, the, for Shamar Bridges so he could turn and make it a catch. So it was actually a really good throw. Um, but, yeah, I like what I saw from Anthony Brown. Now, obviously, like all the Ravens quarterbacks, he's he's mobile. Um, so good for him. Hopefully he can keep that momentum going. I think Tyler Huntley is still going to be clear in the way uh, QB2. Uh, so nothing like that. But good game for Anthony Brown. Stock is definitely pointing in the right direction. All right. Now, the, not to be overly negative, but we got to get to the stock down. Okay. Uh, we got to start at the top. Now, when I say the top, I mean a guy that's been noticed um, that was expected to do some things this year. Uh, I got videos about him on my channel. Uh, Tylen Wallace, right? Now, he got hurt in the game, so that kind of hurts everything like that. But the combination of not standing out in practice, uh, up and down kind of rocky practices, then getting hurt in the game, it's, it's hard to say that Tylen Wallace stock is not going down. Right now, if we're talking about performances, and then especially after the first preseason game, Tylen Wallace, to me, is like wide receiver six. And he's expected to be wide receiver four. Okay, so right now I'm putting Shamar Bridges and Jalen Moore, wide receivers four or five right now. Now, Tylen Wallace, hopefully his knee injury is minor and he can come back. I know how about said it was like a knee sprain. So hopefully that's minor enough to where he can come back soon because I'm not saying he's on the verge of getting cut, but I will have a real issue the Ravens, you know, just kept Tylen Wallace just because he was a fourth round pick and Shamar Bridges is playing better. Uh, uh, um, Jalen Moore is playing better. I'm looking at the stats right here for, for receivers. 
Makai Polk, eight targets, six catches, 43 yards. He's putting it on the field, okay? Benjamin Victor, five five targets, four catches, 30 yards. And then we know what Shamar Bridges did, four catches with 62 yards on five targets and a touchdown, okay? So, Tyler Wallace, and it's hard to say about a player that's hurt, but he's got to step it up, man. Uh, I don't know how. Hopefully, he can like I said, hopefully he recover quickly from that knee injury um, because – there are guys right now playing better than him, and that's just what it is. Um, all right, so next guy on the stock down report, another wide receiver, uh, undrafted uh, free agent wide receiver, Devin Williams. Now, Devin Williams is, he's a player where when the Ravens were signing all these UDFA wide receivers, they signed like six of them. Just by looking at the list, the the size, sorry, uh, 6'5", 220 uh, pounds, Coming from Oregon, um, Keyshawn Johnson, I believe, vouched for him, right? Saying that he was going to be a good player. He would have been, he was my clearing away favorite. Like, okay, this is the guy to watch. This is the guy that, you know, when the Ravens say, I want to bring in big receivers, they talk about Devin Williams. And it just hasn't showed up. It just honestly hasn't. Um, in the game, one catch for eight yards, one target. Now, obviously, that's not a, a completely fair way to judge him just because, you know, targets can go a various amount of ways. But I haven't really heard his name in practice. I didn't really notice him too much in the stadium. I'm just saying that Devin Williams was a guy that I had high expectations for as far as, you know, OK, this could be wide receiver five right here. Right. And he's not doing anything to solidify that. So I would say, you know, like I said, same guy, Shamar Bridges, Jalen, Jalen Moore, Makai Pole. Benjamin Victor, they're all Slade Bolden. He didn't play, but Slade Bolden, all guys above Devin Williams. And Devin Williams, like I said, to me, was the favorite to win. Um, if there was a favorite from a UDFA wide receiver to make this roster, it would. if you would ask me a while ago, right after the draft, I would have told you it was Devin Williams. And that's just not the case right now. He hasn't put it on the field. So hopefully he can rebound and get it together and showcase that talent that we know that he has. All right. Now, last two guys, I'm going to come, I'm going to come together. I'm not going to talk about them separately. Um, it's hard to say stock down because I haven't really seen these guys play exceptionally well at, at any point. Um, Kevon Seymour and Robert Jackson, I, I really I don't need to see any more from those two guys. And I'm not trying to be funny or pick on these guys. This is their livelihood. They're trying to make it to the NFL. I get all of that. But from what I've seen from them guys, it just – it's not enough to warrant them being on this on this team. It's just not. I'm sorry. Um, Kevon Seymour got beat on the, uh, I believe that was him that got beat on the deep ball. He's turned around three different directions, can't locate the football. He's, the receiver's like five yards behind him. Robert Jackson is usually not near the guy he's supposed to be guarding. Um, they played last year under tough circumstances. I get it. We, uh, Wink Martindale put these guys in very, very hard scenarios where they're one on one and they're not, and they shouldn't be. Like, I remember watching the Packers game last year and like wondering why the heck is Robert Jackson guarding Devontae Adams on the goal line? But it was almost to the point where, well, who else is going to do it? You know? But those guys, um, I just don't need to see any more from them. I really don't. Um, I'm sure they're, you know, they're, they're good guys. They're, they were, they were probably good players in college. That's how they got this opportunity. But I just don't think they're NFL level at the moment. I know Kevon Seaman was a veteran. He's been in the league multiple years. But I think the time for him is probably done. And Robert Jackson, same thing. Um, so those are the guys for my stock up, stock down for the Ravens. Uh, we'll see what happens with coming up with, uh, with training camp resuming. Um, I think the end of the open practices is, is probably coming up pretty soon. So we'll see how much we can get out of that. And the Ravens are going to start preparing for the Jets before we know it. And our regular season is going to be right upon us, man. It's your boy, Gabriel. That's another fan TV. I'm out.